Hey, Paisanos, Joseph A. Sabori here, and you're in for a very special Italian treat to join in with pizza along with spaghetti and meatballs and a nice Italian ice cream of any kind. And of course, if, if you want, you would probably try out some other uh, pastas such as fettuccine, linguine, lasagna, <laughs> and all the rest. <laughs> and some salad too, to go with it, with breadsticks. And a nice cold drink. <laughs> okay, well, you get the idea. Anyway, and I'm finally excited that I'm going to really review this movie after waiting for so long, too. But now, Universal Pictures, along with Illumination Entertainment, the same guys that gave us, you guessed it, folks, the Despicable Me movies, along with the spin-off Minions, to join in with The Secret of Life of Pets, Sing, The Grinch, The Lorax, and a whole lot more. <laughs> They finally team up together with Nintendo, the video game company from Japan that gave us our favorites, you guessed it, the plumbers themselves, Super Mario Brothers, in their first CGI animated feature, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yay! And the plot is simple, folks. Two Brooklyn plumbers, Mario and Luigi, are working together as a team, doing their plumbing business, you know, taking care of all the folks around and their family, until all of a sudden they're being sucked straight separately into the warp zone, where Mario winds up in Mushroom Kingdom with Toad, along with Princess Peach, joining with the rest of the entire game. As they brought to uh, team up together, well, for Mario's sake, to save his brother who's, who got sucked into the Dark Winds, yeah, the Dark Lands, where he's being trapped by King Koopa himself, Bowser, Yes, joining in with his rest of his army and his clans to take over the entire world. That's his diabolical plan, was to steal the star and begin to marry Princess Peach. So together they rule both lands. But it's up to Mario and Peach as well as Donkey Kong to join in, so the rest of their army, to stop them and to save Luigi and the rest of the entire game. They are being trapped inside this horrible dungeon that has molten lava around. So far so good. It's doing great at the box office. In fact, it's going pretty strong so far after its debut on April 5th of this year alone. In fact, it just grossed over 377 million worldwide, becoming the fourth highest grossing film of this year out of its 100 million budget. Hard to believe, 100 million. They put a lot of great effort for its story, its characters, its concept, and its video games of them all because that's what made it so popular and fresh right there okay now before I get to the review there's gonna be some more surprises going around <laughs> that I'm gonna show you but I just want to explain it right away that Super Mario Brothers was indeed and it could still be today my childhood favorite. I grew up with Mario ever since I was a kid. In fact, my family used to take me to an arcade 
and then sometimes we probably go to a local restaurant that does have some arcades but what do you know it one of those uh, tabletop uh, arcades that we saw which often shows um, Pac-Man they also had Super Mario Brothers and that's where I got to play it as a kid um, joining in with my brother Jason because yes we were both huge uh, Mario fans ourselves so we used to play these games along all over when we were kids you know just sitting around or standing up on the joystick you know with these two pads and you know all all the buttons around you know to hit around we, we just control you know Mario and having to jump you know for all these blocks and he begins to you know, jump onto the block that has the question mark which shows up the <laughs> indeed the the mushroom which that's where it gives him more giant strength and he'll be able to stop all these uh, Goombas the turtles and, and all there's like so many of them that he gets to be able to to also grab the flower power to use his own uh, secret weapon here was to shoot fire power against all these Goombas and all and you know race against time he also collects all the coins that he needs so that way you know he'll earn some more valuable points and then he'll be able to make it all the way straight into the castle yeah he begins to like you know run as fast as he can he also goes to the warp zone of all these um, all these sewers all, yeah all these sewer drains and you probably see each and every one of them there's always like those flowers around <laughs> so on and so forth and then you have to go to like so many levels around even when you have to go to the warp zones and and then you have to fight against um, King Koopa and to save the princess which at the time was known as Toadstool who's a redhead and of course you have Toad and, and then sometimes you can even play Luigi too Wow, you can do all these obstacles as well. You can even go to C, you go to like any other level, or even the ones with the clouds too, where they're just dumping in all these other uh, turtle shells and stuff, other creatures. And then you have to fight against this giant bullet too, which is not going to be easy because then you have to like jump here and there to escape and then. You had to go to all these other obstacles here, and then you gotta you gotta do your best to to avoid you know not getting hurt or worse yet you know die. <laughs> yeah, or even lose your powers and all that stuff. But <laughs> and I know all the other games that followed after that. You know, with Super Nintendo, because that's why we we got. Um, Super Mario Kart, you know, where it's a racing card game, you know, you get to race uh, against um, all the rest of, um, of the game around, I mean, so on and so forth, and then there's like so many games that follow, okay, and I'll, I'll continue with that, but first I'm going to show you the actual surprise here, <laughs> but what made us, um, wanted to get um, Super Mario Brothers you know to play at home as opposed to playing it at any local arcades here's what we got yes this bad boy right here the Nintendo NES right here and it comes with a surprise too yes Super Mario Brothers along with Duck Hunt yeah, right here. Awesome. I mean, that's exactly how we got it as a Christmas gift uh, back in 1989. And yes, they were selling like tons of copies of these. Like tons of these that people were excited to get. I mean, they had to wait for the prices to go down, you know. 
they were very expensive. They but they started to go down, you know, like under two hundred dollars. Like already hitting straight to like over a hundred, especially when you had to get it during Black Friday. Back then. <laughs> yes. And I'm also gonna show you uh, the rest of the other stuff that I got. Yes, and it's all tangled up. <laughs> But this is exactly where we play the game Duck Hunt, you know, with the zapper. <laughs> yeah. That's how you point it around. And here's the controller. <laughs> so you use all the keypads and everything to control it. You know, whenever you play Mario and all these other Nintendo games are right here. So, had it the whole time, folks. Okay, maybe to show a bit of close up. Yeah. Badass. Yeah, I haven't been using it for a long time, but I'm just glad I, I own it all this time. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I only have 10 games. I wish I can get some more. I used to have other games that sadly we sold. And I would definitely regret myself for that. Like, for example, DuckTales. Awesome game to play on the Nintendo. And I wish we didn't sell that. And then there was other games that we had in our collection. But sadly, we sold those as well. Yeah. But we still have all the games like Tetris. And I, th and I think we also had um, Wix, the Ninja game. Uh, Iron Sword and and all the rest. So we never get bored whenever we we play the Nintendo. Like I guess at times when we're bored, like when there's nothing on good on TV, we just play video games and just have fun. And then sometimes we just go out and just play around. That's what we do. And of course, um, even with its popularity, I mean, I remember we started getting. The shoes too and on top of that what made it so very popular was we finally had an animated series that came out in the late 80s and I'm gonna show you right now because I have the box set right here folks <laughs> the Super Mario Brothers Super Show yay yeah, oh, <laughs> upside down, right there, folks, and you can see the rest right there with Mario and Luigi together, who, who are being chased down by King Koopa, <laughs> and it has all the special features right there on this set, which has a brand new interview with Captain Lou Albino, who, of course, uh, Provided the voice, not to mention Star as Mario. And Captain Lobano, for those who don't know, was a WWF wrestler. He was very popular back in the day. And he was great friends with singer Sidney Lauper. Yeah. And he even has the original art galleries and storyboard to screen, opening title sequence, and a whole lot more. Um, joining in with the volume 2 set that I got, both of which are from Shelf Factory. So, <laughs> here's the entire uh, four disc set. And here we go. <laughs> yep, once again. And this one had some more special features with four bonus animated episodes, meeting Mario, a fan tale featurette. Interactive tour of the Mario Brothers Plumbing, Super Mario Brothers Fan Costume Gallery, and the world of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show Concept Art Galleries. Right there. So, these two shows alone that I own ever since I got them back in 2006, I grew up watching the show along with my brother. It comes on like every, uh, every day at 4 o'clock. On Fox 11, KTTV Los Angeles, as it was premiered. And to join in with it, every Friday, like 
they just basically play four episodes of the Super Mario Brothers, which is on Monday through Thursday, but on Fridays, they played this, The Legend of Zelda, right there. <laughs> yeah, as you can see. Yeah. Well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. And this has uh, all the episodes, 13 and all. And it has special features that has the selected original live-action segments from the show. Along with interactive Legend of Zelda match game, the trivia quiz, and the downloadable character sketch gallery all together. In fact, maybe I should show you all the rest of the DVDs. Uh, maybe I'll start with this. See what it looks like. Um, bit of slipcase. Yeah, it looks really neat. Yeah, you can definitely see it. <laughs> all the episode listings. And it's on a digipack. Yeah, that's Ganon right there, the villain. And you got Link, and you got Zelda. <laughs> they also have other characters like Sprite, you know, Fairy. <laughs> oh, awesome. I hope we get a movie someday, because it definitely needs one. And oh, then go back to this again. <laughs> yep, same as usual. That's how you open it up. Oh, this is going to be a hard one. Oh, here it is, folks. Oh, sorry. I was dropping it. You got Mario, Luigi, Princess Tolstool, and Pink Koopa. And I know they have Toad as well. <laughs> okay, I gotta try to fix this. Put it all back to the way it was. All set up nicely put. And there you go. All together. And same goes with this one. They all came in those, uh, all these clear uh, slim cases right here. Yeah, you got uh, King Koopa. There's this toast stool. Yeah, Mario right there. And Luigi. Okay. So I, I guess we have to like uh, sort of a bit mixed up folks, but I'm gonna try to fix it here. Um there you go. Even has all the artwork of Mario. He even has the episode guide with uh, the list of special features and yeah, same goes with Luigi yep artwork of Luigi and cover art as well yep once again episode guides and special features oh, sorry I'm going over the place Okay. Artwork of Princess Tolstool. I know it's in green. And you can see it. With um, indeed episode guides and list of special features. And then finally, King Koopa. Artwork in blue. <laughs> So guide with the list of special features. And now I gotta put them all back to the way it was. Yeah. Yeah, all together now. Sorry, I just want to make sure everything's all put together. Boy am I wasting time. <laughs> okay. 
So yeah, folks, they were very popular at the time. And then later, the show would, would become Club Mario, where they had this these two guys who were basically dudes. And they basically focus on pretty much like Club MTV in a way. You know, all that they're just doing is focusing on other variety stuff, you know, like mostly a lot of cool stuff from the 90s, you know, like skateboarding, you know, as well as surfing and surfboarding and all that stuff. But, I mean, surfboarding or whatever, whatever sense they play. They, and they, they also focus on, you know, movies and TV shows and other stuff too. And, and they had this one, uh, this one princess on the show you know, with green skin, you know, I think she's an alien princess and all that stuff that that pops up at times. So, they're, basically they're just going around, you know, hanging around in this entire room, just doing the usual stuff. Uh, was not as good as as the original series itself, because it kind of just seems like, well, they had to move on as it follows. And then, um, surprisingly enough, um, you can find a lot of these on YouTube. Um, they were lucky to find them completely all, for all these old segments that they got. They're pretty hard to find. Um, but I was kind of amazed that they only kept one on streaming. But yes, you do get to watch all the Super Mario Brothers Super Show along with all the rest of the Mario shows to join in. Because um, I know after they followed the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, uh, which I'm going to mention right now, that they had both Captain Lou Albino as Mario, uh, joining in with Danny Wells, who's been best known for playing Charlie the Bartender as Luigi. You know, during those live action segments, you know, they're at Brooklyn in their own home, you know, just having some nice, delicious pizza pasta and all that. Meanwhile, they're working on some plumbing until we get several celebrities showing up, such as uh, Elvira, Mrs. of the Dark, yeah, Cassandra Peterson, Sergeant Slaughter from WWF, along with Nicole Eagard from Charles in Charge, and then later she went on to play Summer in Baywatch, along with many others she's done. And they even had um, Maurice Lamarchi as Inspector Gadget. Yes, Maurice Lamarchi, longtime voice actor, went on to do the voice of Brain and Pinky and the Brain. <laughs> yeah, that's him. And they also got uh, other recognizable stars that you can pretty much name of. But of course, when Shell Factory released this, specifically Volume Two, they sort of drop all the other live action segments, you know, due to, well, you know, copyrights and all this other stuff, and also because, you know, they get paid for their appearance, you know, it's, it's licensing deal that they have to go for. Not to mention, um, they did the same with uh, The Legend of Zelda, you know, they didn't bother to put all the other ones so they could. That's why it was becoming really difficult having to find, like, sub-order episodes around uh, but now with streaming and I know it, it kind of sucks these days because it seems like streaming can get everything I guess they were pretty lucky that they got the rest of it as it seems so we could have done a lot better for the DVD set alone but nevertheless um, I'm just glad I own the set for sure but I always love watching the show whenever it's on Fox 11, KTTV, Los Angeles at 4 p.m. So we go around and we just watch it and just have fun. Yes, it's cheesy. It's corny with its campy dialogue and humor. So what? Okay, it was the late 80s, early 90s. You get the idea. And also, we got... Um, Janine Elias to do the voice of Princess Toadstool, along with um, Harvey Atkins as the voice of King Koopa. And I think they had other voice actors to 
well, whatever voice actor they you got that did the voice of Toad and all the rest of these characters. And who could have forget the Plumber's Rap, which is the theme song of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, with both Lou Obano and Danny Wells wrapping it up. And it goes like this. Well, we're the Mario Brothers, and Plumbing's the game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. So if you think it's in trouble, you call us on the double. We're faster than the others, so you can hook on the brothers. Ah! Oh! Hook on the butters. Gibby, gibby, gibby. So you're in for the treat or hanging on your seat. You get it ready for the venture and the remarkable feats. You meet Koopas, Troopers, the Princes, and the Utters. Hanging with the promise you'll be hook on the butters. Through the bridge. I said, oh, I said, hook on the butters, the butters, the butters. Okay. <laughs> uh, you get the idea. And then there's the do the Mario at the end credits, too. But they also did a second verse uh, of the same song, but for the animated version, which is, which starts like this. Here we go, go! It's the Mario Brothers, and plumbing's the game. We found the secret warp so while we're working on the drains. We let the princess our hand in the mushroom land. Doing the action with the plumbers should be hooked on the butters. Now, the evil Koopa and his troopers are up to misbehaving. They keep that the princess of the mushroom land's being saving. They're confusing, confusing everyone, but he discovers they can't help but be hooked on the butters. Ugh. Yeah, get the idea. And then... Again, the do the Mario uh, at the end, you know, with Captain Lou Albino, you know, who was already in the land, just doing his uh, particular do the Mario dance, which is, come on, it's time to go do the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. Swing step by step from side to side. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. All the getter now. Do, 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 do. Just like that. <sighs> okay. <laughs> you get the idea. Yeah, and it was done by Deke. Yes, the company that was from Burbank, California. Founded by Andy Haywood. The guy who was actually uh, one of the writers of Hanna-Barbera shows. And of course he did Inspector Gadget along with The Littles. As well as Dennis the Menace, uh, the real Ghostbusters, and all these other shows that we got from the company before it would later be bought by Cookie Jar. Uh, also, it did used to be owned by Disney too, through ABC and Capital Cities, and it was independent all this time and here and there. And then, well, it's no longer around anymore because it became Cookie Jar, and then later it became DHX Media. And now, Wild Brain. So they own the rights to the show. But Biocom did uh, syndicate the series, or perhaps a distributor for it. So they had a helping hand. <laughs> Hard to believe. Yeah, I'm just getting some water because I'm very thirsty. And what followed after that was The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3. Which is, of course, based on the game itself, because that was a brand new game that actually coincided uh, with the movie The Wizard. <laughs> yes, because they introduced the game before it came in stores. And I know they have the power glove and all that stuff. And yes, The Wizard is the movie with Fred Savage, along with Jenny Lewis, Christian Slater, Bo Bridges, Luke Edwards, and and all the rest. Uh, even Toby McGuire in his when he was a, a kid. <laughs> yeah. Long before he became Peter Parker, aka Spider Man. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, and this time they had different voice actors to do the voice of Mario and Luigi. But they still had Harvey Atkins and I think Janine Elias for for both King Koopa and Princess Toastu and all the rest. And they go for other adventures here and there. And we learn that Koopa has a daughter now named PewDiePie. And yep, and then it has all the songs and, and everything. 
Oh, and also I forgot to mention that uh, both Super Mario Brothers from the Super Show and that show and another show that will follow, which is Super Mario World. Yep, based on the game, of course, um, from um, Super Nintendo. And also because those two shows were part of uh, Captain Ann and the Game Master. So they eventually joined in and they were, they were on NBC at the time. <laughs> okay. They all had the sound effects for the Nintendo game. So, and even the music, too, is so familiar. So they all put it in together as we speak. So they knew what they were doing all, all around. <laughs> yeah, with the 8-bit uh, theme song and all. And, and they do exactly alike. That's just incredible. <laughs> okay. And then, of course, we got the live-action Abomination from 1993, which Hollywood Pictures, the subsidiary of Disney at the time, you know, before they went kaput, uh, joining in with Light Motive and Alive Filmmakers, yeah, which is from producer Roland Joffe, who gave us the movie The Killing Fields, so, along with uh, The Mission and... Of course, uh, City of Joy with um, Patrick Swayze. Yeah, he actually produced this mess. Luckily, he didn't direct the film, but it was actually directed by Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkiel. And yes, this is the one that stars Bob Hoskins from Who Framed Roger Rabbit to join in with John Leguizamo from Kaleido's Way, among other films he's done. And we got Dennis Hopper from Blue Velvet. Uh, along with Speed. Yeah, so they all played uh, Mario, Luigi, and of course King Koopa. Uh, joining in with um, Princess Daisy, who's played by Samantha Mathis, yeah, from Firm Gelly, along with Pump Up the Brian. Yeah, the two movies that had Christian Slater in, yeah, back when they were, when they were a couple for a while. Yeah. Well, I'm going to explain that in the next video when I tear apart that film. But I remember feeling really bad about that when, when I saw the movie in theaters and then I had to see it again because I missed the first half and then had to see the rest just to see how that would go. And Yeah, awful movie, but... <sighs> but hey, you know... Mamma Mia! After 30 years now, I'm just finally glad we got the right movie done with justice. And this is how you do Mario right, folks, with this movie, the Super Mario Brothers movie, right there. <laughs> because they knew exactly what they were doing. So you gotta thank everyone involved, including the creator of Mario, named Suraguru Miyamoto. Because he had help uh, brought Mario to fame, right there. Because <laughs> I know originally he was known simply as Jumpman from the Donkey Kong game. That's right, because he was the one who was about to go after Donkey Kong to catch him. <laughs> okay. So, here we go, folks. The movie stars Chris Pratt, yes, Chris Pratt from the Lego movie, along with the Jurassic World films, uh, Wanted, Parks and Recreations, uh, Take Me Home Tonight, and so many films he's done so far. Yes, even the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. <laughs> Anya Taylor-Joy from The Witch, along with Split. Um, as well as the menu, I haven't seen that one, but I'll check it out. And uh, I think she was also in the movie uh, The Northman. Yes, The Northman, among others. Charlie Day. Yes, Charlie Day from... <laughs> um, oh, what was the name of the show? Um, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, with Danny DeVito, of course, among others. And um, 
He's been in movies like Horrible Bosses, <laughs> so you'll recognize him, and so many others he's done. He was even in a Mountain Dew commercial recently. <laughs> Jack Black, yes, Jack Black, who of course was from Tendacious D, yeah, his own band, joining him with Cal Glass. But he was also in so many movies, too, <laughs> that you can name of, you know, like Kung Fu Panda, School of Rock, High Fidelity, Saving Silverman, uh, Demolition Man, uh, Airborne, also, I also appeared in True Romance uh, in, in a small role, but it was a cameo, and I guess, um, Enemy of the State, uh, among many others he's done in his entire career. Yeah, he's always fun to watch, no matter what. Uh, Keegan-Michael Key, yes. From Key and Peele, Mad TV. And also, joining in with Jordan Peele, of course. <laughs> um, Keanu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Seth Rogen, as we all know. He was from Darny Darko, but yet he was in movies like This Is The End, Super Bad, um, Knocked Up, The 40 Year Old Virgin, um, so on and so forth that he's done. I mean, he's always fun to watch. He's hilarious. Uh, Fred Amberson, who I believe is from Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Cast member. And... He's on the TV show Florindia, I think that's what it's called, on IFC. Sebastian Meniscaco. Uh, Kevin Michael Richardson, you know, longtime voice actor. Because I know he's done a lot of voice acting in many shows and movies and even video games. And so I know you'll recognize him. A lot, like he, he even did Mortal Kombat, Little and Stitch, and all of that. And yes, we even got uh, Charles uh, Martinet, who was the voice of Mario in Super Mario uh, 64. And yes, we had all the other Mario games that followed too, with you know Super Nintendo, with the Super Mario Kart, and and then we had all these other games that follow, you know, like Super Smash Brothers, Mario Party, um, th there's also Mario with Sonic joining in with the Olympic Games, I mean, there's like so many Mario games, you can, you can name it all, but it's kind of hard to keep up, <laughs> and of course, uh, even Super Mario Sunshine, and all. I mean, for all the, the game consoles, you know, like Nintendo 64, GameCube, yeah, Game Boy Advance, SP, D, DS, uh, LC. Uh, we also got the Wii, the Wii U, and now Nintendo Switch. I mean, wow, everywhere. And I know there was Super Famicom in Japan and other kinds of Nintendos to follow. Wow. And of course, Game Boy. <laughs> the original Game Boy. So they had several Mario games on there too. Even Game Boy Color and Game Boy Pocket. <laughs> okay, okay. Also, we got uh, Jessica DiCicco, uh, Don DiMaggio, yes, uh, from uh, Futurama, and Scott Menville, which I, I believe he also did voice acting for a lot of stuff, including Mega Man. Yeah. Oh, wow, so I know you're going to be familiar with all these other voice actors and talents here. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, based on the games from Nintendo, of all the Super Mario Brothers and all the other Mario games to follow, it's written by Matthew Fogel, who, of course, had did um, uh, the Lego Movie 2 that he wrote. And I think he also wrote the last uh, Minions film, yeah, Rise of Gru. That was supposed to be a prequel to where Gru first started before Despicable Me movies came out, <laughs> as we all know. And um, it's directed by Aaron Horvat, 
who of course did the uh, Teen Titans Go, yeah, with the, the movies alone too, and Michael Jalerik, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble, <laughs> who also did the Teen Titans Go as well, so yes, they both team up to do this movie, hard to believe, but that's what we go for. And Mamma Mia, there's going to be some spoilers in this review, so if you haven't seen it, go see it right now before watching this. The movie begins set in Brooklyn, which is in New York, of course. We meet two Italian-American brothers, Mario Mario and Luigi Mario, voiced by Chris Pratt and Charlie Day. And yes... Here comes a, the big surprise, was they actually advertised, <laughs> as they recently started their plumbing business, they actually played the theme song to the Super Mario Brothers Super Show for their advertisement <laughs> on TV. I couldn't believe it. And it just works so well with that. However, their father, who was voiced by Charles Marinette, as we all know, who was the original voice of Mario in the video games, uh, starting with Super Mario Bros. 64 and all that. He disapproves uh, Mario's decision to leave his steady job to join in with Luigi under his antagonistic ex-employee, who's a huge jerk, named Spike, who is voiced by Sebastian Menescalco. Yeah, and he was a former boss of the Wrecking Crew. Yes, so he actually was indeed a construction worker. Anyway, we also learned that Mario doesn't like uh, mushrooms. He's always taking it out out of his spaghetti. But, he, but he's, of course, you know, chatting around, you know, with his entire family here and there about their plumbing business together because their first job or any other jobs that they've been called out on um, <laughs> both Mario and Luigi uh, came to this one um, neighbor's place which they it turns out to be this one big complex and yeah you could definitely see the part where you know you see Mario and Luigi you know running as fast as they can and, and he's doing all the jumps almost looking like exactly as we pictured in the game <laughs> you know trying to get away from it all and going as fast as they can so they're trying to fix uh, the pipe that's at the bathroom which unfortunately they got bumped into this one go-to retriever named Francis who looked a little bit like Pub from Up and you can already tell that he's ferocious because he was about to attack uh, Luigi and then later Mario and then it, the whole bathroom became a disaster you know just when they were trying to fix the problem with the pipes and then all of a sudden water started to go everywhere even in the shower where Francis was at <laughs> and they're trying to stop all, all this racket havoc and then at that point on Francis was about to chase after Mario and Luigi and he flew out of the window but they both saved his life <laughs> so yeah they were very shocked about what just happened but apparently they they did tend to fix it as they could so after um, after dinner you know with all the entire family discussing about their business and and the disapproval and everything Mario just felt um, very disappointed and because he's feeling pretty left out you know already feeling like he's very small he has baby fat of course and he just doesn't get the respect he deserves um, so of course suddenly just to prove all this Mario did spotted along with Luigi um, at their room on the news that they saw a significant manhole leak that was heading around in Brooklyn so both Mario and Luigi had went underground to fix it but suddenly got sucked into 
the warp pipe, which is indeed the warp zone, and they're both separated together. So now, Mario had landed straight into the Mushroom Kingdom that's being ruled by Princess Peach, which will soon become Mario's love interest. And she's voiced by Anya Taylor-Joy. While Luigi wants up landing straight into the Dark Lands, which I guess in some cases is kind of like in the game Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, because we all know that Luigi can be a coward, but he can also be brave too. So he does get scared. So he's being trapped by all these zombies around, all these, uh, these skeleton uh, toads. And now he's being trapped by the evil King Koopa himself, Bowser, who's voiced by Jack Black. Yes. Now, Bowser's uh, diabolical plan was to marry Peach and destroy the entire Mushroom Kingdom using a superstar that he stole uh, from the entire kingdom of, of penguins which eventually he captured all of them and dumped them straight into the dungeon all in, in bird cages uh, filled with molten lava and which Luigi unfortunately is being imprisoned straight into yeah and then you get this weird uh, you know ghostly character that you got who just doesn't care everything but death so it's just weird uh, anyway, he actually imprisoned Luigi to blackmail Mario, who seems to see he had a competition for Peach's love. And yes, he even sang the song um, as we speak about Peach. You know, Peaches, 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 Peaches. <laughs> Join in with his. Um, his um, sidekick uh, joining in and and all the rest of his entire army, his entire Koopas, Troopas, and all the rest as they form an army against one, one another. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, Preach's plan was to actually form the army to stop against uh, Bowser and the rest of his army by actually joining in to ally with the primate cons and that includes donkey con but of course they had to go straight to the jungle kingdom to find king cranky con to agree on on help on one condition that if mario does defeat uh, donkey con for sure which happens to be his son <laughs> in a fight okay but of course uh, Mario is also friends with Toad that he just met earlier, who takes him to Peach. And Toad, of course, is voiced by Keegan-Michael Key. <laughs> yeah, our little mushroom guy. Joining in with the rest of the other mushroom guys and gals, uh, the whole townspeople. Uh, <laughs> I also try to fool them in, too, just when he's about to go in and meet uh, Peach. So Peach uh, offered Mario... A practice on the obstacle course if he's going to join in together to fight against uh, Bowser and the rest of the entire army and also to save Luigi and so of course just like in the video games you know you had to go one one step by step almost like all the levels that you got to go on to to avoid all this um, chaotic uh, <laughs> you know traps like, of course, he had to start up with um, the golden block with the question mark, and that's where it reveals the mushroom. And yes, he doesn't like mushrooms at first, but then he has to try it out right away, so he becomes more bigger and stronger than ever. So now he begins to go all the way up, you know, break those, those tons of bricks and try to, you know, jump here and there, avoid these traps. And it takes a lot of practice for him to do so until he gets it right. And of course he has to jump all the way straight to the flag once he's done. And then he'll get into it. And Peach actually practiced um, that when she was younger. And, and she kept on doing it. Because we learned that Peach um, 
was raised by the toads and now they take care of her and now she becomes the princess and all but she took a lot of practice and had and only took night and day to do so <laughs> for Mario so after that's done and yes they were playing the song holding out for the hero <laughs> that was a surprise too um, because I know that song's been played on every movie uh, ever since the original Footloose. They just recently played it in Shazam! Fury of the Gods, too. But they also played it in the movies like uh, Who's Harry Crumb with John Candy, Short Circuit 2, as, as well as um, Bandits with Bruce Willis, Billy Bob Ford, and Kate Blanchett, all of those films. So you never forget that song. <laughs> but it works. Okay, so after that, um, both Peach and Mario are together, and they're about to go all the way straight to all these other places around, discovering all of, of these mystical lands. I mean, he even spotted uh, the place that has all these flower powers. And yeah, and that's another thing too. You get to um, not only eat the mushrooms to become bigger, you will later use the flower power to, you, to be able to shoot firepower against all the rest of the enemies like the like the troopas and the goombas and and all these other um, mystical creatures around that he has to fight against <laughs> okay and then you also recognize other lands too even the one with Yoshi until they finally went straight into the jungle kingdom where they meet uh, King Cranky Khan who is voiced by Fred Amberson, who agrees to help on the condition that Mario has to defeat Donkey Kong, who of course is voiced by uh, Seth Rogen, <laughs> showing his pecs and being a show-off and, <laughs> and all. I mean, <laughs> so during this particular fight, I mean, yes, I mean, this is one big fight that they have to go against by going to this one big obstacle and this is the obstacle that you would see in Donkey Kong <laughs> yeah with all the barrels uh, rolling around and, and all that and then this is where he ends up of course jumping onto and hitting the the crush the golden crush the mark block so he gets all these other kind of powers and eventually even with um, the spider of Donkey Kong's strength, I mean, yeah, there was one point where he ends up accidentally becoming Mini Mario. <laughs> and then he, he had been defeated a lot too, getting beat up. But somehow he eventually becomes defeating by not only to defeat the Donkey Kong for sure, it was he actually ends up wearing a cat suit. <laughs> Oh, that was very funny. So he did defeat him for sure. So all together now, Mario, Peach, Toad, and the cons have started to use, and you're going to love this because that's part of the game, um, all their carts, yep, just like the Super Mario carts, to drive, that's from the Super Nintendo game as well as all the other um, Nintendo consoles. So they can drive all the way back to the Mushroom Kingdom straight into the Rainbow Road. Yes, and it was definitely like how it was played in the game. But Bowser's army had ambushed them straight into the Rainbow Road when the Koopa General destroys parts of the road and then both Mario and Donkey Kong have plummeted straight down into the ocean and are being eaten by this you like Ma Ray, while all the other cons have been captured, and now both Peach and Toad have returned to the Mushroom Kingdom to urge the citizens to evacuate. And I know there's even this one moment too when, when, the <laughs> and I'm gonna say this, but there's a song that. Um, that Bowser was working on, and of course, it, it is a song about Princess Peach, and you know, peaches, 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 peaches. Oh boy, and Jack Black seems unrecognizable for that voice, but he really nailed it, nevertheless. 
Anyway, <laughs> gotta love that song. I mean, it's crazy, but yeah. So, anyway, Bowser arrives on board on his flying castle to propose to, to Peach because they're getting ready for their wedding. Peach actually has a plan to go to get even with uh, Bowser because we now know that um, Peach is very smart and vulnerable and strong too. So, we all know that she's not going to be able to marry Bowser. I mean, but he had to do. But she had to do so anyway because, because after all, Bowser's uh, torturing um, Mario and all the rest, so or torturing everyone, so so they have to agree. So anyway, um, she did a relentlessly accepts after Bowser's advisor, Kalmek. Who did torture Toad? Yeah, Kalmek is the one who tortured uh, Toad. And then at this rate, both Mario and Donkey Kong had escaped the mall way by riding on the rocket from Donkey Kong's carts. And they were hurry up just to stop Bowser and Peach's wedding for sure, and also to save um, Luigi, um, the rest of the cons as well as the penguins and everyone else that were trapped in, into the birdcage and are going to go straight into the molten lava until finally after the wedding reception when Bowser attempted to execute all of the prisoners um, in Peach's honor that Peach finally got to stop Bowser and the rest by using this one power to freeze anybody um, and also freeze um, the the and also to freeze the the one pit that's that's uh, trying that's dumping all the rest of the bird cages of Luigi and the rest uh, down into molten lava so now um, so yes they're now being saved by Mario Donkey Kong and the rest of the army so now there's they're about to defeat Bowser for their own game and the rest of his army. So they all join together as they fight. And then Mario, of course, was about to go after uh, and try to stop this one giant bullet that just got shot up in the air, was ready to hit straight into the castle of the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, Peach's castle. So he's trying to stop it, and then he went straight in, all the way into the warp zone pipe, which now eventually flashes all the way, and they suck all the rest of the, the entire game, including Bowser and the rest of the army, all the way straight into his hometown, Brooklyn. And that's where it ends in a huge battle. So now both Mario and Luigi teamed up together to finally stop Bowser. Yes. And they surely did. <laughs> so now everything's back to normal. The rest of the entire game had went back to where they are. And now, and also saved the rest of the townspeople in Brooklyn and fixed everything as as weeks gone by but not only that both Mario and Luigi are together in their own entire place so getting ready to do their plumbing business inside the Mushroom Kingdom to join in with the rest of the entire games and so on and so forth and hoping they'll get ready for their next big adventure once that happens <laughs> Okay. Oh. Totally refreshing. This is how you do Mario right, folks. Right there. See, unlike the 1993 live-action abomination that they did 30 years ago. Yeah, that was a, a disaster in the making. It was a travesty. 
a total insult to the entire story of Super Mario Brothers and it is a cesspool for sure this is exactly how you do Super Mario Brothers right you know they got the characters exactly in sync even though they they come up with some new stories to follow and and the best part of them all there's no force um, woke agenda any SJW stuff going around with today's generation to throw in directly into the story that's that's based on the video games themselves and yes they definitely respect and did justice to the video games alone for their concept and characters alone they knew what they were doing and you get a lot of great surprises going around too um, that you spotted and a lot of cameos here and there and and all the music that you're familiar with too they're all there and I gotta say um, the anim the illumination team did an excellent job to join in with Nintendo and creator Shigeru Miyamoto and yes there have been a controversy ab about the casting that they chose but you know what I have not had a problem with that even back in 2021 I was really excited when they they were gonna plan on doing this ever since they they show the early uh, poster of uh, the movie back in 2020 so I knew they were going to be planning on doing this by the time 2021 comes and they're getting ready and all set up too and now they're all they're about to continue they were about to record all this and they did all the animation as they could and they're doing everything exactly like what the video games were even in recent years because they definitely knew exactly what they were doing and they did the research they did everything they could to to make sure it doesn't suck and they and even with their names peach instead of toadstool and bowser instead of uh, king koopa because i know they had to go for different names for the characters and of course Peach being a blonde now and all and then all the other characters as we all know and love this was going to be one exciting adventure woohoo woohoo sorry I can't do it <laughs> anyway and I gotta say uh, coming from Chris Pratt um, I know people may have trouble thinking because people are giving him a hard time these days I mean with his political statements and all this other stuff going around especially on the internet I gotta say Chris Pratt did an excellent job um, providing the voice of Mario I thought he did a great job actually I mean okay there were times when he sort of slipped out of his Italian accents um, here and there because it was kind of almost getting to the point where I think he's starting to lose it a little bit uh, but deep down aside he did try and and he did work this hard to get the authentic uh, Italian accent just right and he did what he could so I thought he did a great job nevertheless and that goes the same with Charlie Day because even Charlie Day uh, managed to adopt the the Italian accent very well as well I didn't had a problem with him either so I, I understand they could have got Charles uh, Marinette to to provide the, the original voice but it's understandable I mean we had to we had to take it from here I mean they had to go for an entire main cast uh, all have done movies from Hollywood and everything so this is one of the biggest events of all time so that's exactly what they're trying to do and I thought all in, and Anya Taylor-Joy did a wonderful job doing the voice of Princess Peach She's definitely strong, um, definitely smart, and also she was bondable too as well, and it shows. See, and, and it's great to hear that Peach actually helps Mario out. That was refreshing. I love that, and I love those scenes uh, with her and Mario. 
So, pretty much, <laughs> Mario's teacher in a way. <laughs> Before Love Ventures. But I think that's going to take a while. <laughs> uh, anyway, and it's also uh, nice to throw in some other voice acting to join in. I mean, especially Jack Black, who really nailed it as the voice of Bowser. I mean, unrecognizable for the king of the Koopas, but it really works. Because, I gotta say, he did a lot of practice having to provide that voice, for sure. And that goes the same with Keegan-Michael Key as Toad. Yeah, I mean, almost starting to sound quite different from from the other Toad from Super Mario Bros. Super Show and all the other uh, Super Mario shows that we follow. Um, and then, of course, Donkey Kong. <laughs> Voiced by Seth Rogen. I mean, yeah, he really nailed it, too. Because he's an anthropomorphic uh, gorilla. Very powerful. And higher to the throne of the jungle kingdom. And he's just, you know, showing off his pecs and all that. I mean, he's just... Yeah, he, he's basically what he is. I mean, he's a macho kind of guy. Almost couldn't get along with Mario at first. But after a while, I mean, they got used to them. <laughs> And of course, uh, King Cranky Khan, as voiced by Fred Am Amberson, I mean, did a great job too. And that goes the same with the rest of the cast of the actors around. I mean, and it's great to hear Charles Marnett, uh, you know, did the voice of his father. Yeah, Mario and Luigi's father. I mean, I could definitely s see a little bit of Mario in him, in, in a way. And they did a terrific job. The animation is just incredible. Just like how the video games look. I mean, they they put a lot of great effort to it. They worked so hard. They, they must have spent like months, maybe even a year to work on this. And they did it exactly right. And this is the perfect time too because uh, Universal Parks and Resorts, which includes Hollywood and Florida... Just recently opened the Super Nintendo World um, theme attraction. Yeah, um, starting in February of this year. And it looks great because then now we can finally have the ride of, um, of all the Super Mario Brothers and all these other um, Nintendo games here and there. And I guess they can even throw in Pokemon too. <laughs> So that's really cool and yeah they they had to work so hard discussing that they were going to work on this and and that's what they did all together and i love that so this is definitely a refreshing love letter to all of the popular mario games right there and that's how you do it right folks that's how you do it right but of course Rotten Tomatoes, with all the critics around, and IGN, which is part of it, well, they gave this movie a 55%, almost closer to hitting 60%, unless maybe they're going to keep on trying to find plenty of critics who are going to finally go all the way straight up to um, maybe even more. I mean, I know it's not certified fresh. But there's no way that this movie is bad. That's ridiculous. Ludicrous. I guess they're just complaining that, you know, that it's not as good as the Jumanji sequels that, that they praise so much. Or those stupid DreamWorks uh, Trolls films. I can't believe they just made a third film, too. And, it, and they just showed the trailer before I went to see this movie in theaters. Yeah, because I went to see this movie with my sister Eileen. Uh, along with my cousin Opa and my mother, um, as we know. <laughs> uh, hopefully my brother will see it too, along with Tina and, and maybe the rest too. Yeah. <laughs> but we had an awesome time because we went to see this uh, before uh, I ended up playing the Mario game, yeah, which was the Mario Kart uh, at Dave & Buster's uh, next to AMC in Santa Anita, California so wow <laughs> yeah so we had an awesome time and I'm glad and I would love to see this movie again especially on 4k ultra HD when I when I pick it up yeah 
Um, oh yeah, but again, they're just full of themselves, you know, when it comes to these critics. I mean, they always have to praise another bad movie after another. It's always a garbage film. I mean, who can forget them for praising the movie Cuties on Netflix? So, it's like we can't take them too seriously anymore. Anyway, and if that's not the case, INGN, out of all people, had they had this one person on there, and he actually, and they actually claim that it's for kids. Once again, they keep doing this argument against animated films, especially a video game adaptation with that's done with justice, like Super Mario Brothers. They say it's for kids. So it's not for adults, it's not for seniors or anybody else but kids. When are these when are these idiots ever gonna learn? It's meant for all ages for our demographics. And it's not just for boys, it's for girls too. For guys and gals, for any age, especially for those who grew up with the series. The entire Mario games for all Mario fans. And this is how you respect all of the Mario fans out there that deserves better. And they did deserve better. And we waited this long to have a better Mario film than the 1993 live action Abomination. Okay? And, and on top of that, we get John Leguizamo, and I hope he's joking. Because he eventually is acting like he's really defending that piece of crap. And he obviously just can't admit it. Oh, because it doesn't have diversity. I mean, that's stupid. We shouldn't have any force um, agenda, diversity, or any of this stuff going around. I know we should have diversity, period, in agendas. But we don't want to go too far with every other escapism for movies like this. For entertainment. I mean, we want to have fun. We don't want to feel bored and tired. That's the whole point, folks. We love movies, but we also love video games. And video games is art! Enough of this argument. I mean, especially from the late, great Roger Ebert. I mean, he should know better. That video games deserve respect. As opposed to to cinema okay that's like saying cinema isn't art at all and that is not fair not fair at all okay anyway uh, enough of that rant right there but I'm just I'm just bringing in the statement right here because that's exactly what's going on with people today in this dumbed-down generation okay we finally got the Super Mario Brothers movie that we've been waiting for for over 30 years now we wanted a better one, and this is the thanks they get for us? No kidding. But, hey, after Sonic the Hedgehog, which already did excellent so far, even with the second movie, which was even better, I'm just glad we finally got this movie we deserved. I mean, Mario was almost going to have a cameo appearance in Wrecker Ralph, and he never got a chance. But Sonic did. And hey, I mean, both Mario and Sonic went together, too. I mean, working together with Sega. So that's great that they got to team up together to join forces. And, hope, and maybe someday they might do a movie together, if it's possible. Like another crossover. Who knows? So. Anyway, um, the writers and directors did a great job. They knew what they were doing. They got the producers. They got everyone involved. The music was incredible, done by Brian Tyler, and of course has a kick-ass soundtrack with all the 80s songs here and there. I mean, I know there was a lot of criticism going around with voice actors and all this other stuff going around too, but nevertheless, they did an excellent job, and I'm happy, and I'm proud of it, even as a Mario fan. But of course, I'm a Peanuts fan too, and Sonic fan, and all these other kind of fans here and there. <laughs> Tenchi fan too, or any other. Okay, and I know this video was very long, but I had to do it. <laughs> and I'm sorry I had to spoil the surprise, but I just can't help it. Anyway, 
So that's the Super Mario Brothers movie, and I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.